I reconvene the council meeting for the annual plan. And could we all please turn to page 82 for the IT digitisation update? Um, Your Worship, I just wondered, do you and the council wish to see the current state of the live um, impact spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. Where? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, Sh Sharon, is it possible to um, bring up, just before we begin this next uh, segment, um, and just let's test it, um, the um, spreadsheet, please, with the consequences of some previous decisions? Sure thing. Just one moment. Just be like our council. Now you might have to. Do that, obviously. Is that all right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm at the front and I'm having trouble. Might have to blow it up. <laughs> Can I move through this? Good idea, right? It's a percentage. Yeah. Keep What's the bottom line, line say, Brian? Keep going. She's moved the bottom line away, but it sort of started with a two. Oh, you, can, you can see it at the top line. Yeah, it's at the three. top as well. Yeah, so just to confirm, the green line at the top will change as you make your decisions. So at the moment, we're looking at 2.63. That was our baseline. Yeah, now with the decisions you've made. To, sorry? Go to the bottom, Sharon, and just see where we're tracking now on that 2.63 line. Um, if you look at the one beside it, Brian, the 2.23 is where you're tracking now. Oh, sweet. Right, I thank you. So everyone got that? So we're tracking up 0.4 of a percent below our baseline. What was the primary movers of that, Sharon? Um, you can see them listed below that. There's, we've we've um, reduced the rates reduction and... Um, resource consents fees, and then there's the salary freeze and the climate change so far. Thank you, brilliant. So, so the big component, Sharon, would currently be in terms of the saving, the rate savings is the salary freeze. Correct. Which gets, which will be eaten into now by subsequent decisions, but that's where we're going. Okay. Councillors, once again, if we could please draw attention to page 82, IT digitisation update. John, do you have anything that you wish to add to your report? Um, no, Your Worship. Um, it's just basically, I think it's better because we are paying off the, um, the asset purchase over a longer period of time at a lower interest rate. So I think it's all good stuff. Right. Matters open for discussion, councillors. If we don't have any discussion, I've got two recommendations there. Someone oh. prepared to move those? Okay. Councillor Kennedy's moving. Do I have a seconder, please? Seconded, Councillor Bowieler. Any discussion before we put it to the vote? All those in favour? Aye. All those against? Thank you, councillors. Over to page 84, we've got the community funding requests. Now, obviously, we're going to go through them individually, but is there, in fact, I'm not even going to go to it. We're just, this is, this is politics time, so politics it is. So, firstly, we receive the report. Was that what you were doing, Michelle? Yeah. Move, Councillor Kennedy, second, Councillor Finch, recommendation one that we receive the report. All those in favour? Aye. All those against, thank you. Recommendation number two, Catlin, Catlin's Coast Incorporated's request for a one-off increase. This was, remember, from the maps that are awfully popular. Specifically on that item, uh, matters open for discussion. Councillor Grant. Yeah, I think we should be, um, should be supporting this because, uh, hey, it's a big drive to, to get tourism um, local. Um, yeah, let's get out there and, and give them a chance. Councillor Payne. Thank you, Your Worship. I just want a clarification for a start. I, I, my interpretation is that, of this was that they were coming initially to ask for $1,500, not for the increase. So that's, that's the way this motion reads to me. They're asking for an increase on the $1,500. But my 
my my thought process was that they were coming to ask for the fifteen hundred dollars, and then they've reconsidered and they would decide that they may need more in the light of what the COVID has done, and they might have to do more stuff to get less tourists, and they were a bit uncertain of where it was, and now they're asking for three thousand dollars. I don't know if that's clear or unclear, but. That's my interpretation of the request. I, I saw the request, Councillor Payne, twofold. They wanted us to continue with the 1500 that we've given them previous years, but in light of the fact that they were in and going out with another print, they want they were. So can we definitely get 1500 and can you please consider 3000? That's right. And so the recommendation as it stands is whether we approve the 3000 or. No, I'm open to suggestion. I, I've seen it that they wanted the three. No, it was also the, the question, Your Worship, that, 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 that if we don't approve it, they're still asking for $1,500. That's what I'm trying to establish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Councillor Lederman, did you get it? I'd just like to stick with the $1,500 increase um, this year. I know that they, I can understand they want to do the um, increase in maps, but is tourism really going to be that powerful? This year, um, and if it's local tourism, which it will be, yeah, I actually am keen to support with the fifteen hundred that we've been doing and not the extra. So, Karen, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I hate when we sit around a, as a council bickering over a few hundred dollars. To me, given the people who three thousand dollars, they're doing a great thing. I think they presented very well, so I'm happy with three thousand dollars. Think of the staff time and the bits and pieces to get to this stage, and we're handling over hundreds. It's Good councillor Herbert. I fully agree with Councillor Cowie, and it was a few hundred dollars. But the point of the matter is that going forward, we're looking for domestic tourists and domestic tourists only. And for 1500 bucks, if we can get in the front of the queue and get people down here that have never been here, I think it's money well spent. And I want to support them because otherwise, it's going to be a burden on some of those businesses in that, that district that probably can't afford the sponsorship they normally have in other years. So I think it's, it's money well spent for us and gets us. Maybe people down here to see our wonderful part of the world. Great, Councillor Herbert. I, as I said, they're doing our job for us. They're doing a marvellous job. And actually, if they print out all the, the maps and they don't get used this year, I hope they do. But if they don't, they're going to be there for next year. So, uh, so sign of support, Ken. Uh, sorry, Councillor. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, no, ditto for me. Uh, uh, this is, and I see this as targeted support as well in an area that really needs it most. So I'm fully in favour of actually giving them $3,000. And I did ask the question about the maps. They do get dated, but they can be used in the following years anyway. So you're moving in that direction, Councillor? So I'm right? moving that uh, direction. So that's an approved 3000 Do I have a second of place? Councillor Graham was the first off the shot there. Any discussion before we put it to the vote? Put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. 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 Those against? Thank you. The next request is from the Catlin Historic Society. Matters open for discussion. Is this for three? So it's number three, the request for the annual rent paid to the Catlin Sorry, Catlin Historic Society. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Sutherland, followed by Councillor Catherwood. Is three and four this pretty much the same thing? They're asking no, no, for fifteen hundred. No, no. Increased by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. they want to win. So, and I will take them separate because some could see that they will go with that, but not cover. Yeah. So, uh, we're specifically, councillors, so that you're aware, we're on number three, and only number three. Sorry. Um, Councillor Catherwood, followed by Lou, followed by five. <coughs> yes, I'm uh, speaking to number th uh, to three. Um, I think it's only fair uh, that um, they do get an increase of $1,500 towards their rent. Uh, just so you guys uh, can fully understand how it operates, it's like a, a council service centre inside the Historical Society's building. Um, that council rents a space off. It's also our local library in Awaka, um, and it's also our local information centre. Um, so that, 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 the, the visitor numbers uh, through the area have been on a growth, growth path for quite some years. Um, so they've done a fantastic job. Unfortunately, the Historical Society has overseen. Um, they haven't seen the increases over the years. They've only picked it up this year. That's why they've got their hand out the extra 1500 I fully support it. It's a very cheap rental um, for what council services are getting run out of that building, I feel. Thank you. Now we've got Councillor Ludeman, followed by Foster. I also support um, getting the 
increase of 1500 it's probably been on this of council to um, have this because it was in the original agreement that the event needs to be reviewed. So I think it's probably something else. Thank to you, Councillor so. Lederman. Sorry, I thought you had done this. Councillor Foster. Uh, I also uh, agree with the 1500 increase, um, but I don't support any retrospective. Deal with that one next, Councillor Foster. <laughs> <laughs> and unless there's a dissenting opinion, Councillor Payne, for the final comment. Oh, thank you, Worship. But it's always said. Yeah, I was just going to support this as well. I think the last the Catlins Historical Society have done some due diligence, and this, this is what needs to be done. So I support the regular increase of, the, of $1,500 to $1,000. Thank you for that. Just checking, Justine. We're going to, where is Justine? We're going to move in a second, haven't we? Yeah. Yes. yes, we have. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. So we're going to move on a second to put to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Thank you. Now part B, uh, which is number four, which is a one-off payment to acknowledge that this is a group that's been entirely focused on the tasks at hand. And since 2007, they'll be one of the very few landlords that have let things slip for the council. It is open for discussion. Councillor Wheeler. Thank you, Rich. Well, I suggest perhaps we just make a, a small token payment for really just, um, I don't want to backdate it, but just perhaps acknowledging it for this year, perhaps a $1,500, uh, um, yes, it's the increase for $1,500, so to cover this year, actually, so it would actually come out of this year's, this year's accounts rather than trying to backdate to previous years as well. So it's just updating that really for this year. I'll move that just to for the discussion. It's early days for a mover, but I'll take it. So I've got a mover for fifteen hundred dollars, a pragmatic compromise, seconded by Councillor Finch. Specifically on that, uh, matters open for discussion. Councillor Graham. Uh, I just wonder if earlier on we were talking about being a good landlord and um, by having through tough times. Um, and do we want to be a good team? Uh, oh, do we get a uh, after he's cut off for the last month? Or, or do we be a good tenant and say, hey, look, um, we realise we've been ripping off and um, I'd, I'd be supporting um, paying them off. So are you making an amendment to the recommendation to the motion? What was counting on the big bruises? 1500 yeah, I am actually. I, I would say what half of that would have been. It's 13 years. 3,250. How much? Well, they were they were wanting a request to say 500. Did you mean a change? Yeah, I don't remember. That's what it was. That worked out. 3,250. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got an amendment. We've upped the stakes. Unlike what you'll read in the letters to the editor, we do have compassion. And we're going in a bidding war in the upwards direction, so I've got a mover. Do I have a second to the mover for 3,250? I'll have a second. Thank you, Councillor Herbert. The amendment is now to be discussed. herbert has got a heart. If there's no discussion, we'll put the amendment to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Two against? Can we have the, have the call rather rather Sorry. than the answer? That's no. two to either. No, it's only the amendment. So now becomes the substantive motion. I'd put the substantive motion to the vote unless there is any last minute, last minute discussion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? I, mean, I don't understand. <laughs> so sorry, Councillor Foster, I know it's, that, it's, it's the first time probably where we're having to have amendments. So when you're doing an amendment, you vote that the amendment gets passed and then that becomes the substantive motion. So it's a, a two-stage process instead of just one. So um, what has just happened is it was passed almost unanimously. I'm not sure now that it is $3,250 and consequently you can vote against that. You can also have your vote recorded, you could abstain and you could agree. So which one was it? No. No. Do you want that vote recorded? Yes, And Councillor Foster wants her vote recorded. 
Thank you for that, councillors. Our next one is the Kluta District Combined Museum Group's request for funding of 8,994 to be confirmed. Now, as I take it, can I have a clarification before we enter into this, either to Sharon or John? Has that had, um, is that the amount the same as last year or has it been inflation adjusted? Um, through you, Your Worship, it is the same. Okay, so we know what boundaries we're working on with Councillor Herbert. Can I just ask then, carrying on from that, it's probably a question for Steve or Sharon. So those figures that are historical and have been in the last year or two, are they still are they in the budget as a carrier from last year? So if we agree that that's not going to affect the, the bottom line. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Can I say that um, in the years that the combined group has been working, They've been so frugal and yet they've done so well and there's been a cohesion amongst them. Thank you, Gaynor, for the work that you've put in and I will go straight to you because actually you'll put the time and you have your say. When I um, try to attend their meetings, sometimes I miss them and they are a really great bunch of people that put a lot into their district and they do do things really well and they have come together really well as a group of combined museum meetings now, and they discuss things like what they will buy a scanner, a camera, and it goes around the whole group. And they are really passionate about what they do. They've done, as I say, really good jobs in the community, but I'd like to see it um, rate, um, inflation adjusted as well. Um, otherwise they're on the backward step. And I'd like to move that we do continue on, but have it um, inflation adjusted. They go through to the Otago Museum, they get um, ideas of different things from them and they get together and have lots of really good group meetings. It's a really great group of people. Councillor Finch, could I suggest that inflation is running somewhere, or let's say it's at 2%, they would take it to a monthly figure of 59,000 and something. What, what's how we rounded off at 60,000 for this year? Yeah. It's only in 1100, but rather than let's discuss what inflation is, so we know the figure. Yes, please. So uh, Councillor Finch has moved that we give the Combined Museums Group funding of 60000 for the 2021 year. Go and see them. Your Worship, can I just, yeah. I just need to clarify that the, they have not requested the new funding. Um, Jean's been working with the groups. Um, the submission doesn't ask for anything more. Um, and so I just have to make the point that we're increasing it without the group requesting it. I'm sure they would love it. Yes, I'm sure that they, they would, anybody with a group would love it. I'm just making the point that it wasn't in the submission, it wasn't asked for. Yeah, I know that. Correct. And yet Gaynor would know the sentiment of the group going to the meetings. Councillor Lederman, was that a second? I do need a second of applause. No, I'm not seconding. I have a second. So we're now going to second our Councillor Cowie, Councillor Lederman. Well, I'll speak against it because it's what we went out and consulted on. And I probably would question whether it hasn't gone up slightly from last year. I'm not sure, but it's, has, it's as we consulted in last time's annual plan, that figure has been known. They haven't asked for any more. And, um, you know, next year when we're doing long-term plans, certainly an opportunity, but this time they haven't asked for any more. In fact, they, they did speak at um, the submissions and they were more than happy. They only wanted they asked to be supported to this this extent, so I'm actually increasing it. Okay, we're going to move in a second. We'll test it with a vote. So, um, could everyone that please supports it uh, vote now? All those in favour say aye. Sorry, sixty thousand dollars. So we've got the move in the second. We've moved it from fifty a, a whole one thousand and six dollars up, just to reflect it. So it's $60,000, and all those in favour, please say aye. 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 All those against? Aye. The motion's been lost. I'm looking for another recommendation. Councillor Ludeman. Aye, move. Um, number five, as it is there, that we approve the funding of 58 Okay, recommendation as it stands, I've got a mover in Council Ludeman, a seconder in Council Payne, matters open for discussion. Yes, Councillor Graham. Yeah, does, does that include the um, Kai Museum? All of them. Yes. The yes. Museum. Yes. All yes. Of them. So it's so split. It's split between them all, and they worked out who needed what right. for the year. Right. 
Because this isn't, this isn't um, the bit that with um, Gary Ross is that the yeah, hysterical no, story. No, it's totally it. different. So about seven or eight years ago, when it was quite, we had to treat them all and try to keep it even. They're a group, we've given them the autonomy, we've given them the funding. So Kaitanka, yeah. Milton, if they decide, like Gaynor says, that it goes to a camera and they move it all around, or if one group has a real doozy in opposition. So we know what we're looking at and pretty well know where we're heading at 58,994. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Ask unanimously. Thank you for that. The next one is the Kluta District Supermaster Games request for six hundred dollars. Just for new councillors, is every new? I know that most councillors are aware. Does everyone, the, the new councillors, know what the Supermaster Games is? No. That is open for discussion. Council Letterman followed by Thompson and Funk. I actually attended the Supermasters Games for the uh, mayor this last year, and um, amazing and fully support the funding towards us. They do a great job. And in fact, if any councillors are even free on the day, they should volunteer because they're perhaps getting a wee bit short of um, fit volunteers. But, so I would actually like to move that funding. So we're going to move it. Do I have a second to please? Councillor Graham's got a smile on his face that wide. He's going to have to speak next, I'm afraid. <laughs> are you seconding Councillor Graham? Yes, and I'd like to, I think we should be supporting anything that that keeps Councillor Volweiler active. That's all. I thought you were going to have a go at Councillor Loon, and that was. <laughs> so we've got a mover in a second, though. Um, that is open for discussion now. Councillor Foster. I'm just questioning whether that would actually go ahead this year in October. It doesn't it doesn't last. Last. October. 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 Yeah. Coming under Christmas, I can remember. Let's hope it does, but time will tell. Yeah. Right, uh, we've got no more discussion on it. We know what we're voting on, so put it to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? It was unanimous, thank you. Next one is the Clue to Rec Centre. Asking for an increase of 15000 on their operating grant. That is open for discussion. Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> I live by the Cross Recreation Centre. Um, all that they do in the community and or the district. Um, but I'm just doing some numbers here. Like 15,000 is a fair old height from what they were getting. Um, so I just have to be mindful of, you know, this is, well, I don't know, it might be a 35% increase or something like that. That's gone up, and that becomes the new, the new, uh, the new norm. Um, and so, I think we just got to be mindful of where it's going. Um, I see later on they've they've got a building project which I uh, think is very good, and they're actually able to put some money towards that from their current accounts. So it's just something to see. Just it can be. I'll be the cat amongst the thing. I'm against this. Um, every year they come back, they want more. How many of us have got centres around our, our communities? Um, and I will definitely be making sure we put in for the higher grants next time because um, we certainly don't keep having the increases all the time. I think it's time this, um, and don't get me wrong, it is a great facility for the community in the district, but I think it's time this um, project started to pay a bit more back to itself. Um, whether they've got enough some of the charges or whatever to pay for the lighting and all the rest of it, but like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm against this one. Can I say, over the last year, while it's not obvious, I have been doing a waddling exercise campaign. And most nights I park down on the rec centre car park and go for my waddle. And virtually every night that car park's full of Lawrence people, Milton people, and Derry even say Could even be some West Otago ones I've said day. It's a facility for the district and primarily it's a facility for the young ones. When I was at school, how many times was netball cancelled? and sports that you could never ever plan your sporting it's actually for the when we had the farm to know that the sports facility was actually there instead of the old 
what was the name of the tennis court? The Green Court. Yeah. This is a facility for everyone. And if I, uh, in my rates, especially this year, if we can get up and going and keep the kids in sport, keep them active, um, like Councillor Kelly said just a wee while ago, we're, we're losing the plot when a billion dollar organisation is fixated on 15,000 to keep our kids in sport. Who's got a motion? Who's the first to pull their gunny up their holster? Come on. All right, I will. Oh, well, hold on, Councillor Payne. So, just... I don't have a motion, but I, I do believe that when, when we enter into community projects like this, and, and there is always a question around sustainability and, and how they will finance themselves throughout the years. And, and I mean, that takes some creative thinking, I think, sometimes, and looking outside the square. And I mean, I, I'm probably feeling the sentiments of everybody in this room. I want to support them, but I, I do understand that, that, that increments every year is pretty hard going on the, the rate payout to see it every year. And we do get quite a bit of feedback about that very thing, about we're paying for this. And we've seen it in some of the submissions this year even, that um, you know, what, they're supposed to be rates neutral, or we're not, we should be getting it for nothing, whatever. And the actual fact, it just keeps going up and up on them. So we do have to put some consideration into the sustainability or perhaps the cross rec seem to do too. And yeah, it's just, just my thoughts. I'm sorry, I'm thinking earlier. Yeah. Can I say, Councillor Payne, as COVID's progressed, every single one of our service agencies at the moment is saying they're handling the pressure, but in the coming months, it's going to manifest itself in mental health issues. And one of the best things you can do for mental health issues is to get out, pound the pavement, sweat, do some sport, get, get interested. Of all the years, support our sporting, and number one, our preeminent sporting group. It's got to be this year. Um, it's just an investment in our young kids, not only in their health and well-being of their body, but also their mind. Ali, uh, sorry, Councillor. Uh, the Crossbar, I totally support the Cross Recreation Centre for what they do. And um, like the mayor says, there is always people there, and it is a great facility. But I, I know we're only looking at this recommendation, but I probably am looking at two recommendations as I yeah. as I um, see this. And I actually probably can't support the fifteen thousand dollar piece just because I would prefer to be supported the um, the next the next motion. Um, we just haven't got a bottomless pit here, and um, for that reason, well, while I do accept they're doing extremely well, I'm, I'm not here to knock them at all, um, but I just, some, we're all having to look at other ways of funding and things, and I would far rather support the um, request for funding for their building, so um, that's perhaps what I like. Councillor Grant. Uh, yeah, I'm probably the opposite of that. Sorry, um, Councillor Ludeman. I, I think um, it's tough times um, and and getting external funding or, or sponsorship is probably going to be a lot tougher this year than in the past. Normally, I, I was because I think when when I came on to or well, when they came on to council, one hundred thirty thousand they were getting or something, like, and and it has crept up. But this year's it's not going to be easy, um, and and nothing makes people feel better than getting out there and, and playing rugby or playing netball or, or whatever. So um, maybe as they close it up and all you guys with young kids can have your kids at home, yeah, that'd be fun for every Saturday afternoon. Um, I'd be supporting the fifteen thousand, but I'd have reservations about the. Um, for the cost of the building's improvements. Okay, right, team, I'm still out there looking around for a recommendation. Councillor Fitch, did you have your hand up? Not a recommendation. Okay, Councillor Graham was I'll, the next one. I'll, Sorry, to I'll, say. I'll move that recommendation that um, that increase 15,000 to the 63,500. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Foster seconded. Um, so it's approved, open for discussion. 
Right, then we'll put it to a vote. Uh, I think we'll have the hands go up this time as well, please. So, oh, sorry, did you? Want to sorry, say? late, <laughs> late um, thought. It's it's just when you look at the breakdown of the fifteen thousand, seven thousand of that is insurance, which is outside of their control, um, and six thousand is is for um, is for the, towards the staff. So, yeah, um, I I don't think they're inflated. But it's a it's an inflated request. Right, we're going to put it to a vote. Can we have a show of hands too, please? All those in favour, raise your hands and say aye. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. All those against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion's lost. Case to Richard Clark proposing an alternative. Yes, you certainly can. Perhaps. Um, See, rather than the full fifteen thousand, perhaps five thousand dollars. So increase by uh, five thousand dollars. See if that's acceptable to you. I know we've got a, a alteration to the recommendation. Five thousand dollars. To have a second to that, please, Councillor Catherwood. Five thousand is now open for discussion. You better do the old hands thing again. All those in favour, please say aye and raise your hands. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, six Motion's carried. Do those that voted against wish their vote recorded? Yeah. Who's the <coughs> Councillor yeah. Kennedy wanted the vote recorded. Thank you for that. So it's 5,000. Moving on now to Cross Recreation Centre, request for an increase of 26749 towards capital cost of building improvements. No, that's a good question. Certainly, Councillor Thing. So it's an increase. I can't remember what the original bit was. 150. 150 plus another 26. <laughs> Is open for discussion, Councillors. Councillor Cowley. Uh, I think it was me. Um, well, I think it's good that they're making some improvements to their building, and um, if you're prepared to accept the recommendation. I didn't see the hands bouncing up, so I've got no reason why not, Councillor oh, I'm Cowley. I'm happy to move. <coughs> approved the request. Be approved. I've got an approved move. Have I got a second to Councillor yep. Payne? Matters yeah. open for discussion. Councillor Payne. Well, thank you, Richard. This is actually how I saw it panning out, and this is still supporting the Cross Recreation Centre major, and, and it also meets our what we we live by here at Council as a 15% funding as well. So, yeah, totally support. Thank you for that. Any further discussion, councillors, before we put to the vote? We better do the hands thing again. So please, everyone, uh, raise your hands and say aye. If you agree, all those in favour, say aye. 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 All those against, please raise your hands and say nay. One, two, three. Do any of the nays wish their vote recorded? Thank you for that. We move on now to... Project Bruce. So, pro Project Bruce, um, I'm actually suggesting right at the start that the recommendation that came through wasn't quite how I saw it, and I'd really like a conversation. As I've always seen it in Lawrence and in West Otago, they have their community boards. If they want to pay for it, they can go ahead and they can do it. They see the value of it. No one knows your community better than your own people. And that support's always come through and very much as a driving force in Tapanui and Lawrence, so is Project Bruce. When I heard that 25% of Milton children were going to school without any food in their bellies, there was only one group that I knew that was not to blame, and that was the kids. And there was only one group that had the social awareness to be able to do anything with it. And I... Having, I'll openly say, I can do anything other than befriend the three people that are there. You could put another three people into Project Bruce and it just wouldn't work. Those three are so switched into their community that we should, just investing in Milton, 
Just the same as we invest in community boards because the community wants it. If Milton wants their project Bruce, then either we could do it one of two ways. We could go 50-50 because at the moment it's all UAGC. And I don't think that the benefit is equally spread right across the district, neither is the community boards. But we could do either 50-50 where the community of the wider Bruce Ward pays 50% and the district pays 50% through UAGC, or we could do it that it's 100% uh, um, Bruce Ward. The 50-50 one would have the uh, UAGC at $10.07, no, at $2.81, and the Bruce Ward people paying ten dollars and seven cents. So for two dollars eighty one, um, I would always support the magnificent work that they do through Milton. Um, but I don't think UAGC is hitting the spot. And many may vote. I know for myself, I don't think it's right to spam it right across the district. <laughs> Councillor Finch, um, followed by. We're sorry, Bosha. We just need to get some clarity on the feasibility, technical feasibility of that suggestion. There was some discussion. I just need to get. Um, I just need to get from the staff, Your Worship, Sharon, John, and Jules. Um, I had some comments from yesterday when you mentioned it to me. Um, it's been mentioned that ward rating is not an option, as it would require a change to our revenue and financing policy. Can that be confirmed? Someone, Sharon, John, or Jules? Wish someone had told me that yesterday. Uh, well, by the time I got that, I had other things on my Sorry. Somebody going to answer? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. The, the, the discussion was last night, so oh, yeah, sorry. I was this Is anyone going to say anything? John? John? Right I'll, I'll leave that to our rating gurus, but that's my understanding. Uh, is that we don't actually have a ward rating mechanism for the Bruce Ward currently, while we do have for the community boards in Lawrence. Uh, the Lawrence Tupac Award and the West Otago Award. Jules, when we did the districtisation, we split the district up into six circles. You know, the Waihola, Tyree Mouth, Milton and the like went down to Clarksville. And that was the area that is most going to benefit from it. And that was how I saw we would do it. Just the same as the districtisation rating. We rate for the three waters under that scheme. Well, the, the only, um, through you, Your Worship, the only rate we currently use that area for is the community services rate which is 50% UAGC and 50% over that area uh, and, and, and there is a question mark and Sharon may be able to provide an update uh, on whether a community, this, the, the project Bruce fits in as community services the way we've defined it in our revenue and financing policy so that is a, a technical issue that um, John or Sharon may be able to provide further comment. I wouldn't like to see things fall over on a technical issue. Um, sorry, by that technical, I mean it's a legal rating issue. That it may be an illegal, if we rate in a way that we haven't defined, it may not be a legal rate. Um, but that, I think, was something that Sharon was looking into late yesterday. What's your thought, Sharon? Um, yeah, sorry, everyone. I don't actually think we can do that at this point, but I haven't finished looking into it fully, I'm afraid. Uh -huh. I've been told that this morning. I'm sorry, um, through you, Your Worship, that, that the op next opportunity to change that would be at the long-term plan. So that could be reviewed uh, within, with after one year and a change of mechanism. To be quite blunt, Jules, the chances of them surviving one year if we don't provide this money right now is not something that I want to vote on. Councillor Finch, followed by Luderman. Thank you. Um, having gone past and gone into um, the building quite frequently, you see people coming and going and then having outside contact with the ones that work there. They are really, really busy. They've had a vegetable garden up and going and distribute the vegetables and there is a box outside the door and there is vegetables in it, there's bread in it to give away to the community for those that need it. They hold a lot of workshop days and they were going to go around the community and do that with them as well. They do so much for so many people in the Milton community. They got on about the um, children without lunch. <coughs> and I've got lunch boxes of children all at the schools 
all sorted out for those that are in need. They do so many different things around the community that it's really, really amazing. And if this funding does not go through this year, if we have to wait till the annual, annual plan, then I really don't think they'll be there. The three that are there mainly are amazing. They really drive it, they've put so much thought into it. And that's also what's behind, <coughs> excuse me, the Milton Community Pool Project as well. They have brought in so many people, and it's not just from Milton, they bring in people from Tyra now, as representatives from Milton Area Promotion. Most of the um, clubs and stuff around the district attend, so there's input from all of them, but they cannot get funding. They've changed the way it is done now, the umbrella it's in, so that they can apply for some funding. So they've done everything they can to get support. The way it was set up initially, they couldn't go to the government. The government started, started it off and then backed off and left them with no funding. It's not right that that's done all the time. And if this falls over, it will really be to the detriment of a lot of people in the whole of the Bruce Ward, not just Milton, they were going to take it around the whole district, like I said, all their workshops and stuff. They do so many good things. There is knitted jerseys in that <coughs> people can go in and get. There's clothing. They're there for anyone and everyone in the whole of the Bruce school. I'd hate to see this fall over. Uh, just let us speak for a clarification, then it's Councillor Kimberly Herbert. Yes, so, so you wish it just, you know, if you are um, tending towards supporting it, but are worried about the, the, the question around where it should be charged to and all this, which is an issue of legal um, rating requirements. Um, and um, and the LTP, the long-term plan uh, process, is one where we can look at all those financing side of it and make some changes if that's the case. So an option, if you were a supportive of the project but didn't want to have any particular rating impacts as a consequence while you are then getting to a point of determining that, is simply um, uh, fund it from receipts. Simple as that. There is, there is reserves sitting there. I'm not talking the investment reserves, I'm just talking general reserve. It's not a lot of money. If you wanted to tide it over, as you're saying, if it's that important and you, you want to support it, but are worried about the rating impact, and you think logically, really, that there should be an opportunity for the community to put their hand up and say they support it and then charge it to the community, but we can't do it now, then you have an ability to tide it over. Um, by reserve, if you worship, no rating impact is the other thing, and um, get you over that, and you can probably um, address that through your various policies and your consultation through the long term plan process. Where was I? I was at Councillor, I did a run down, Councillor Kennedy, Herbert Ludeman Payne. Thanks for that, Steve. That was actually what I wanted to hear. Um, I'm not saying this isn't a great group, it is a great group, we all have them in our areas and um, I'm quite in favour of taking it out of reserves, but then it goes to long-term plan and that goes across Bruce District. If they can't support it, then it doesn't happen. John. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm not taking anything away from, from this group and what they do. They obviously do, you know, they do really good work and they're really enthusiastic and they're good people. And, and But we've all got good people. And I kind of resent the way this has ended up at, at the council and it keeps ending up here. This is the second or third year. Um, Ministry of Business and Innovation started this. They started for three years funding, then they pull out and leave a vacuum. And that vacuum means up at our door. And I kind of resent the way that keeps happening. Um, I don't like the way it gets compared to the West Tiger or, or the Lawrence Chilbert Community Board because it's it's, it's, there's no comparison. We're not a social agency community board. So this, we're not providing kids lunches or, or vegetables. It's, it's, it's completely different. Um, this is not a core council responsibility. This, these are social issues. This is, not our, this is not our job. I'm sorry to say, this is not our job. And it only benefits the Bruce District. If you could find a simple way of a targeted rate, similar to the West Targa Medical Centre, where it's only on West Targa, because only West Targa people benefit, then they can do what they want. But at the moment, I can't support it, and I won't. I kind of go back to when this was discussed at the annual plan hearing last year, and we did discuss that how this could be rated within the Bruce Ward. And yeah, I thought that perhaps that was going to be able to be addressed this year. I actually support this group, they do a great job in the community. 
and you know, we put money and council towards economic development in our district, but I sometimes wonder if it actually is going right around the district and every part of the district sees different areas and um, I think it's something we need to look at long and hard in our next long term plan, how we do this, our living and working and our equitable and supporting different groups in the, in the whole of the district. Um, so I think it's, 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 this is the second year it's come, very similar discussion and nothing's almost changed in a year that, except that group has just grown and grown and they are doing a huge job and I see them as being extremely important in that district. So if there's a way that we could rate it somehow, I'm really supportive. I mean, to be fair, they are totally supporting the Bruce district and that really is how this needs to be rated because that is where all of their work is being done. So we, that's where I'd like to see it rated, if that was a possibility. But I would also like to see them getting the funding because they are doing an important job. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. I'm getting a bit mixed up. I think it was Council of Time. Sorry, was it Foster? Uh, no, no, no. It's a like Ian Yeah, Ian, uh, so Council of Time Finch. Thank you, Worship. Council of Urgham has sort of covered off a lot of my points, but um, I think this regionally with an interest, this is where the rubber hits the road, and, and especially in a year like this, and, and I, I find this, um, what they do is very highly important, and to say that, that actually, um, social and well-being isn't part of our core business. I, be I believe I saw a mandate somewhere where it's saying where it actually is part of our core business yeah. now, and so we do need to be mindful of that. And so, um, yeah, I th same as Andreas, I think it's a great group. I think we need to show some sort of support in some way. I'm you know, making the discussion about what that is, but um, yeah, the state I'm supporting them. Thank you. I'd like to move that we do um, give them the money and that it comes from the reserves, was it Steve? General reserves. General reserves for the one year till we get to the annual plan so then it can be sorted out and dealt with. But this year they need that to get to next year, to get to the annual plan. Like I said, they've changed how they work the group so that they can try and get funding now when it was first set up. They couldn't apply the way it was set up. Can you clarify the you know, ins and outs of that? You're allowed to answer questions. Oh, it's now a charitable trust in yeah. some way, which it was not. Um, so they've got an opportunity now where they didn't have before. So hopefully that will help make a big difference as well. But they have saved many people from a lot of horrendous things. So we need a second. Oh, yes, we do too. So we're going to move it to a second of Councillor Wilkinson. And now we're going to Councillor Cowley, followed by Grant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I, su I support the group too, but I'm not prepared to support them to the tune of uh, $60,000. And I was going to ask that we could sort of maybe find some sort of compromise somewhere in the middle or something like that. But that was going to be my suggestion. But anyway, we're going to vote ahead of us now. Thank you for that, Councillor Graham. Yeah, I fully support this, but I think it's got a <clears throat> it's got wider implications in that that um, it gives them confidence in that and, and belief in the council, and, and we're wanting that Milton public to have that confidence and get them behind the the um, community led pool and all that sort of stuff. I think if we we slam them down here, uh, we get them kicking the teeth. Uh, we're not instilling that confidence in them for, for bigger projects. Thank you for that. Right, I've got to move in a second and I'm going to put to the vote. Which you motion? Why are we moving? So it's 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 $60,000 for one so, year yeah. and we yeah. go yeah. back and, and yeah. it's the long term plan that we'll be able long to have a review. Yeah. But if we don't support here, there won't be anything to have a look at in my belief in the next year. So I, I put it to the vote. Please uh, show with your hands again. So all those in favour, please raise your hands and say aye. Aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wahoo, thank you. And all those again, <laughs> please raise your hands and say no. One, two, three, four. Do any of the nays wish to have their vote recorded? Yep. Yeah. 
We've seen you. Councillor Herbert. Herbert has... I'm, I will take please. Councillor Herbert, Councillor Kelly, have their votes recorded. Thank you. Me. Before we just go on, can I actually make ask that this definitely goes in the long-term plan because I can remember last year being discussion around the way this was rated, exactly the same as we've had today. So I want to make sure that this is an absolute must that this becomes part of the long-term plan. Um, uh, certainly um, through your worship, but don't forget these are generally changed in the long-term plan, not the annual plans, the revenue and financing policies and the award rating policies. So, the generally long-term plan change. Thank you for that. Now the next one that we've got is the annual grant for the sport quota. So it's just a rollover of where we've been to assist them with the great work that they do. And that is open for discussion. Oh, and all my scribble. My notes for Project Bruce took up more than just a wee bit of the page. You only got a short version of it. Um, my apologies, number 10, South Otago and Peace Society's request for $20,000 for the roof. Can I ask a question? Certainly can, Councillor. Thank you. I asked um, of the person that was here if they were going to be putting any of their own money in towards it. If you remember, she didn't even know what the bank balance was. We got that on the day because I'd asked Larissa if we could have it. So we still have no clarification if they're putting any funding in towards that. Does anybody know anything? Was it on Route 27 or something? Do we know? Um, Larissa or uh, someone that's compiled it, have they ever got back to you with the figures? We got it on the day. It's 70,000. It was a bit in the bank. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, but no, was it just exactly 20,000? I'm just checking, Larissa, are you there? Uh, yes, apologies, that additional information isn't within the agenda. Um, would you like me to see if I can track it down immediately for you to have a look at? Yeah, just have a guess to it. Okay, just a moment. So, Larissa, while we're doing that, we will go ahead and do some questions. So it was Councillor Lederman before Councillor Grant. From my memory, they had 72,000. It may be wrong, but I'm actually not prepared to approve that funding. I just think in a year, um, we do need to be being careful. I'm not supportive of the funding. Thank you for that, Councillor Erdman. Councillor Brown. Yeah, um, last year it was 10,000 to um, move and replace the roof. And this year it's 20,000 to replace the roof. And next year it'll be 30,000 to paint the roof. I won't be supporting it. How are we getting on, Larissa? Larissa, are you there? Not as well as I hoped, sorry. I haven't um, been able to get it as yet. Do you want me to continue? I'm going to push ahead because the assertion made that they had around that 70,000 in the bank was where I saw it. Is that where it is, John? 71, 76. Yeah, right up. Current, confirmed current. It. No, we're right, Larissa. We've, we've got the facts in our head before we vote. Thank you for that, team. Yes, it doesn't. No, that's just copies financial. So it doesn't, doesn't say what they're doing. It just says what's the they've got the bank. So still, how much was the roof costing us? Councillor Catherwood. Yeah, just to remind you, when, when that submission did come through, I do remember the conversation that that bank balance wasn't the current bank balance, the 72,000 for the year. Figure, but when you do read it here, the South Otago AM received already a $10,000 grant in 1920 to go towards the removal and the replacement already. Now they'll come back for another 20. So I'll be going against. Councillor Herbert. If you remember, we actually gave them $5,000 a few years ago for their entertainment as well, at very, very short notice. About three years ago, three or four years ago. Um, look, I'm a member of the West Tiger and Peace Society, and what worries me in this is their sponsorship, their membership, their trade display, and their entries are all dropping. Sadly, the average age of the committee is too old, and those are those people are not the future of that committee. They need some young people that actually rejuvenate that. 
it's safe to say, well, I can't support the least, but they need to kickstart, need to start this thing again and get it going from the ground up with young people. And they'll have no trouble raising the money to, to build the shed. But I, I can't support either because this is the third time in my short time that these people come back to funds. We seem to be the, the backstop to all their problems. Is there not, I, just for clarification, was there not some tie up with ownership down there at buildings with us? Grandstand. Just the grandstand. Uh, no, it's been historical. There's a line down the middle. Okay. We should, I probably should, I feel that I need to explain a little bit um, to let them off the hook a bit, is that at the time that they were considering putting the request in, council had a huge surplus in its investment account for two years. And so when we do see community groups, we do say to them, well, um, you know, as of what you did last time, last year when we had a massive surplus, you actually distributed a lot of money to community groups. You had quite a um, generous viewpoint. So um, that was the discussion that was held with them on the basis that if you don't put your hand up, you won't get something. So I just feel that they need to have, have a little bit of defence for them that that's how the, it was originating, um, to be fair to them. I know. I'm going to put it to, have we got a mover? We won't nothing. Okay, what are you moving, Alan? Uh, what are you moving, Councillor Ludwig? I'm sorry. I don't support that. Not, not approved. approved. Not approved. So we've got a not approved move by Councillor Ludeman. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Sutherland, any further discussion? Put to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? Me. Yeah, I'm me too. So that's um, passed. Do either of the nay votes want to record it? Yeah, I will have mine recorded. <laughs> Council, Councillor Payne's recording his no. Thank you for that, that's Councillor. <laughs> I hear your sentiments 100%. Right, the, this time I go to the Clutus Sports rollover basically of 47,348. Matters open for discussion. I'll just move it. If you'll just move it and still just, uh, Councillor Carey will just second it. <coughs> Any further discussion? Put it to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion's passed. Justine, are you see what's coming up on the screen? Two minutes and it's gone. Do you need us to have a timeout while you do this, or can we keep no, going? I'll just extend that. We'll shift on to the other Zoom. Right, so we now move on to number 12. The council approves dot, dot, dot the, to go towards the project assessment study for the Clutha District Facilities Plan. Uh, there's an early one in that no, no. No. Sorry, 11 is the confirmed one that you need, and yeah. 12 is the discretionary. Yeah, yeah, we just voted on that one. Oh, like straight through, vote bang and yeah. gone. So, number 12, uh, Councillor Ludeman. Right, um, I guess Ed, what the financials and the COVID 19, I'd like to just um, put this one on hold, and so lots, no funding. Um, and this year, they, they really didn't have a, a, a good plan of what they um, proposed to do as far as the, doing the Clutha District Facilities Plan. They kind of sort of outlined that they were going to do it, but they, they didn't seem to have a good program set as to what they were doing. And I'd rather than come back, perhaps in the long-term plan, with a, a proper proposal of, of, of what they were proposing because it was very um, open and wishy-washy and I, I just it was obviously on the wish list but I don't think it there was a lot of um, substance to it at this stage. Thank you for that. Justine you got things under control or we'll keep recording. I can't read what that one there is. Get it done. Thank you. So, uh, further discussion, Councillor Finch. Thank you. I totally agree. I'd like to see some ideas. They had nothing concrete. They had nothing at all to be able to tell us any detail or anything about what could or could happen. So, I'm in agreement with that, and I'd like to move that we do just put it on hold for this year, please. So, consequently, if we're putting it on hold, we... So, we don't approve we do the not approve. approve it. I'll second you. So, uh, move Councillor Finch, second with Councillor Ludeman that we do not approve the request. Any further discussion? Well, what, you know, 
So they've come in number 12 with a, uh, hey, can we have some money? Councillor Ludeman seconded by Councillor Hunter. Saying, no, the other way around. Oh, sorry, other way around. Sport Clute. Sport Clute. So we're quite clear on what we're voting on, that we do not uh, support the funding application. All those in favour, say aye. Aye. Those against? Thank you. Final one is the approval or non-approval of the funding of 9500 for the continuation of the Sport New Zealand Rural Travel Fund, which is administered by the Travel Fund of Assessment Committee the Council. Well, Councillor Ludeman, again, you're on fire. I am on fire, but actually I think it's a typo because uh, I think it should be 5000 Nine and a half thousand is what comes from um, Spark. And it, it is. And if you, oh, no, I didn't bring it. And in your minutes, you actually asked for the um, the five thousand. I had it highlighted at home. Anyway, so we give them more than that. They always get nine and a half from um, Sport New Zealand. And last year we gave five thousand. Two years I think from five thousand. And in the minutes of your last meeting, it was that you would ask council for another. For the five again this year, which I did have highlighted at home, but I haven't. But it came to the last council meeting to someone wants to follow. Councillor Aaron? Uh, well, it wasn't a typo. We, we asked for nine and a half thousand, and if you actually look at it, I think I might move it. Um, and the reason being that, that, and as we said before about the recreation, it's, it's never been more important to get kids away from their bedroom and out of off their computers and doing sport and all the rest of it, because this, this is actually a really enjoyable community to be part of, and it's front-end money, it's putting money to kids and, and creating good habits. And if you just bear with me, we actually did give $5,000 for two years, and the first lot of um, accountability forms came through at the last meeting we had, from the first year, and the lady from some of the really good submissions, but one of them said, probably a quarter of our children who don't usually play sport did, or are this year because of the fuel vouchers we supplied. So it's actually making a huge difference. Another lady said, the fund has continued to grow sport of hockey, touch and basketball, plus encourages support and a wide network of families to participate in the sports, to assist families who may, may not otherwise. So it's not just the kids, but actually it's the whole family. So mum and dad are gonna bring the kids. So it's actually getting everyone out of the house and, and doing stuff. And the motivation was for us to, us to match a dollar for dollar. It's actually not, a, it's a fairly modest figure to go from five to nine and a half. It's another four and a half thousand dollars. And if you look on the table of what's requested each year, it's around the twenty nine to thirty thousand dollars. We don't even go halfway towards it. So that's why we're 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 backing the backing the kids and backing the people and getting them out and doing stuff. So I you know I support it. I can speak on it because I'm council appointed. <laughs> and I love that. I love the passion job. That's what we want around the room. Good stuff. So what are we done? Council Van Willen. Happy to move, if your worship. The council does approve. Um, Putting this nine thousand five hundred dollars in for us, I think it's uh, money well, a good investment for us. Like Seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Beat you to the door, Councillor Finch. Any further discussion? Councillor Ludeman's coming back into the ring. Sorry, I will speak. I'm sorry, I won't support it at nine and a half thousand. Um, the five was enough for me. Look, I used to do this for ten years. I. Um, <coughs> This, um, committee and I did see where the money went and I saw that families mostly got a ten dollar voucher at the end of it and um, I would prefer that we would be supporting our sporting clubs in different ways because all these um, yeah my yeah I personally would rather support air sporting clubs and other ways. I just wasn't sure, confident of how the money was was dished around. And look, it, it is a small amount and they do do a lot of travel, but yeah, that's just my take on that. Thank you, Councillor Lindman, Councillor Payne. Thank you, Worship. Just uh, clarification to establish that it's, uh, we're, the rating impact's four and a half rent. Is that, is that it? Because the, the 5,000 have already been budgeted for it? No. No. It's, no. Um, uh, sorry, three Bishop. Sharon, can we just confirm? Um, have we got a full rating impact of nine and a half thousand, or just the increase? Um, three Your Worship, it's nine and a half. Nine and a half. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to move to a second then. So we might, we'll put it to the vote and test where we are. So all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. All those against, please say nay. Motion's carried. Was that a nay council function? Do you want your vote recorded? No. Can I just check, Steve, should we have a tally up of where we, where we are? Before we hit this one? Uh, we would do, Your Worship. So um, what I would say, um, with that I can finish. Sharon, can you bring up the, um, the revised spreadsheet to see where we are? Because uh, effectively that's the end of the decisions other than uh, what are you going to do on a couple of the main key points to resolve what will be your end average rates increase? So can you play that for a bit, please, and just say where we ended up? So am I right to say that 2.63 is 2.31, Sharon? Correct. We've got a problem next year. Yeah. Correct. Uh, yes, yes, you wish, but we've got, we've got a long-term plan to sort that one out. Well, there's also, there's two, there's two things we do, because we haven't, we didn't apply smoothing, roading smoothing last, last time, and we've still got roading smoothing available um, to assist bring us under the 4%. It will just depend, you wish, whether or not there is an argument on the table and a proposal on the table to um, to reduce that rating impact of the 2.3, whatever it is, down to zero, because that was suggested, or a question, because the, there's a cost to that, and that will then impact on year two, and we can we can show you what that will be, because we did say this is an option, it was asked for as an option. Uh, when I did the calculus before, it was about an input of 612,000, I think it was. We can figure out what it is, but that has a subsequent impact on year two as well. The way I modelled it last time, you wish it was that the, the roading smoothing uh, for year two, leaving it at the current rate, um, can, can bring it under for the 4% for um, year two, and we can show what that will be using roading smoothing, and the, leaving it at the 2.3%. What I was also able to demonstrate, if you were to put in the 600 odd thousand or more to bring it to a 0% average rate increase, the year you would use all the roading smoothing in year two and still not be able to achieve your 4% cap. We can, do, we can show you, but I'm just summarising for you, so what I mean by it. Um, and, and that's an important, so, so how we constructed it is firstly, um, your starting point, if you do nothing more, as you would normally do at the end, is you would stay at the 2.31, whatever it is, percent. We would do the roading smoothing, we would take some of the 400 we have available, just so that we could, for the year two, it's not in, it's, it's, um, it will show in, in year two what we need to do, um, just to prove that we can make around the 4% without worrying about it. That's one, that's one option. And then the second one we need to do is to ask you to look at the, the um, options around what would it mean to reduce it to 0% and the consequences, and we can and we'll show you that too. So, um, and then the final one, if we were introducing the report, but was just the other question around whether or not you were going to consider um, a non-rating impact also um, uh, in position or put aside some money to spend on um, COVID-affected um, uh, reactions. So there's a difference because if you put money into the 0% rating option, that reduces rates revenue, and we said before it affects year two, and we show that. If you put money aside for COVID reactions, all you're doing is pulling money out of your investments and it doesn't affect rates, right? So it's not the same consequences. And you can do both, because you can. Um, and so that's the, that's the pre-explanation you worship. So I'll let you do the speaking before we then do some modeling if you want. So just remember, we started the day at 3.61, that was the baseline. Then before we started these discussions, we were at 2.63, and after deliberation, we're at 2.31. So in effect, the evolution of the baseline has now gone to 2.31 and we now go to page 92 for discussion of rate impacts and final decisions on rates. I'll take the recommendations individually. Well, obviously we're going to have to consider diametrically opposed. So the first one is that we just received the report. That's an easy one to get out of the way by Councillor Finch, seconded by Councillor Herbert. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, so just the explanation of the second one, Your Worship, I only put that in there in case you felt that at the end of what you've just decided, 
you were unhappy with um, getting to um, 2.31. So there was only a mechanism to go back to something and change it. If you have no intention to go back to anything, then um, I would suggest we don't go and resolve anything at the recommendation two. Yep. Councillor Ludeman. I just asked a question. Last year when we did this annual plan and we got to this stage and we, we'd given out all the money and we, we didn't actually spend all the money. Remember um, the Nature Park group about 260000 or something and then I think there was about, I might be wrong, about 600 odd thousand that we didn't um, get rid of basically. It was put aside. So would there be any opportunity of bringing that in this year because, because there's a need? Like, I mean, we've got basically because of COVID-19, we've got um, a reason to perhaps bring that money in and, and help this year's rates. Is that an option? I don't know. Um, the, the, this is the, an explanation, Your Worship, or through Your Worship. Um, this is the thing about how you look at the investment fund. So at the time when we were in surpluses, Yes, we would help us say the surplus was X amount of dollars yeah. and we didn't spend 600000 yeah. on it. Yeah. But we've just lost 2.2 million in um, total um, <laughs> So that's effectively gone by, by that process. So we don't, we don't, when we look at it, at the time of the decision it was there. Yeah. Um, you look at it now and you go, no, it's a total fund, we've lost X amount of dollars. So if you want to compartmentalise it, you can say, I did put aside 600000 and we could make it available, but the end result is you're still taking it out of equity, right? So um, you're only ever taking it out before of the returns you were making. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, regardless, it was always coming out of return. So if it's a lesser return, you're still taking it out. So the answer is um, don't look at it as if you had 600 in the bank that you had unallocated. Um, just look at it as a decision like anything else. Um, um, there's X amount of unallocated um, investment income, uh, investments available that you can go into if you wish to. It has consequences in a small way of slight reductions later, but um, they're unallocated investment that you could use. So you can either use it to put it into the zero rates thing and you'll see what happens as a result if you've got an option, or you could use parts of it or anything. Just, just like we made a decision to say there's a general reserve fund or Around about 270,000, just spent 60,000 on it for that. Okay, so that is a compartmentalisation simply because that, that's the ups and downs in a given year surplus or deficit of operations. And, and the last year we were about zero, we didn't make much movement. But potentially we could make a deficit like this year we could, um, but we would argue we've got 270,000 sitting there for that before we reach into anything else. That's what that's compartmentalised. But in terms of investment, otherwise you can make decisions and say, I want to buy something else or I want to do something else from my investment money or your investment money, and you can make those calls. It's not necessarily allocated. The last one thing you can't do is you can't get into depreciation reserves and things, but there is a chunk. I think Sharon's working it out. I, I would have thought it's about six or eight million or something like that of unallocated investment. Okay. So, councillors. I don't have a political discussion, and I think you all know that this is fundamental to the council that I want. I believe in the nine years that we've transformed and we've got more and more attached to our communities, and our communities in response have been more and more attached to us. We do seem to be going in tandem. You know, the, the groups that we've talked about and supported today, the individual groups, are growing in momentum and confidence and so it's where the council and I've always been really proud of the fact that we have shown compassion, that we have shown understanding, we have understood the needs and the wants of our district and we've held hands with our district and we've made steps. Each and every person in this room and each and every person in our district has been traumatised by the last two months and regardless of where your financial position is, we're all looking over our shoulder. I know I am, why wouldn't we financially? Times are changing. And the one response that we've had consistently, they haven't said to halve the rates, or they want a rate reduction. It is purely a perception thing. Can you just, in this storm, use some of your rainy money? We've got over $20 million, which, are, why have we got 20 million? Because our parents, put money into a rainy day account. That's pretty much what it is. 
And we can say that it's going to cause problems next year, and yet we harmonise everything that we do, and if we sort this year out and the long-term plan doesn't sort it out, we can harmonise again. But when all our ratepayers are looking over their shoulder, and all they're asking of, of us is, not millions and millions of dollars, I'm picking somewhere, if it is 2.31, that we're around $520,000. If we put $520,000 out of our investment, that's way less than what we've earned in the last month on our account, I might add. We just put it out and we put it in there. Then each and every one of them will know that we are a council with compassion, that we do understand the, the trauma that our entire district and our nation is going through, and it's such a small amount. But when we turn around in a few months' time when we go to Milton and we ask them to support us, they'll know we were there for them. When we go to Belclutha and we ask them to support Belclutha, we were there for them. And it goes on to Lawrence and it goes on to everywhere else. I can't believe that, and I know that it's different because it's loan funded and it's building and it's what have you. 500 and whatever thousand wasn't gonna make a jot of difference if we did this roof. But when we put a roof, a shelter over the entire district's psychological perception of where we are as a council, just as a, um, reputation, an investment in our council's reputation for understanding where our district is, it's peanuts. I see the regional council has gone from double digits down to less than 2.31. I see that every council around us has responded in a far greater. We were lower than them, but they've gone past us and down. And when I look at LGFA, when they rated all the councils financially, who was at the top of all the councils in New Zealand, we have the ability to take a smidgen of our money and show the support. It's the, it's the measure of a man, it's a measure of the, a person, and it will be the measure of the council. It's something quite fundamental to me for the council that I want to do. That's my thoughts. Oh, you wish you want to see that model? Yeah. Okay, so it's up there now. Um, so, um, bigger, you might be able to read it off. The figure needed to reduce it to zero is 600,000. 600, Where are you looking? Just about. Oh, there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 600,000 is the investment you wish it. Um, and the impact on year two is a movement to 7.2%. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think what we're doing with the harmonisation. We did harmonisation of the district in the millions. And if 600,000 wipe that out, then we will, we've already wiped 1% out on an annual plan. Uh, there's one thing left to do, Your Worship. It's not, I mean, it's not yeah, quite it's as bad. Road. It's, it's not as bad as that. Have, right. um, it's still going to be above 4%. But if, if we now input the 450, so if we wipe out, if we just put in what we have available to smooth, which we've been using in different years. We've got 450,000 up our sleeve. That's all we've got. So, Sharon, can you put in the 450, yeah, please? 5.52. So that, that would wipe out your road smoothing options for the future, and we would be at 5.5%. So that's, that's all our job to do, is show you the figures. And remember that this morning we started at 3.61 and just the natural flow dropped 1.2. We've got the major long-term plan, which is way more manipulative than the annual plan. We can pull that 5.2 down. It's whether we want to or not. It's what you want to define yourself as a council, as I said, because we don't have to do it. When a person comes and asks you, can you help them when they're a kick in the guts, you can always say, no, no problem doing that. But it's not the council that I want one to have defined as us. And we all know harmonisation solves the problem time and again. And actually, if we had to dig into one or two hundred or three hundred thousand next year to smooth it off, it's investing in, in, in our reputation, as far as I said. Councillor Mawil. Uh, zero rates are effectively a zero percent rates increase certainly looks good but I think given what that pushes out in the following years if we have to keep dipping into that to keep under four percent year on year for the next five years or so that 
it's going to end up chewing up those reserves that, uh, that we've built up anyway. And we have a responsibility as well to keep those reserves. And we're using those reserves to, to generate income too. This year we are already digging into them because we're with the rate subsidy and it's greater than the interest than the, um, the interest we've earned. So I, I certainly am not in favour of going down to a um, to a zero percent rate increase or close to it. You know, and it's perhaps perhaps put in no more than half of what his worship is suggesting because. I think we need to be more targeted. There are still parts, there are still industries in this district that, is, that are doing pretty well, really. So I think we're better to target rather than just splash money around over everybody there. It creates an unrealistic expectation. So I don't have a suggestion of, of what we go. I, I think you know, getting down to 2% rates, rates increase isn't too bad. And um, I know the pressure comes on. On from rate pays any rate increase gets um, gets a negative impact. We've worked hard to get it down to two point three percent, was it? And um, we're still supporting community groups in this district who are doing good things for our, in our communities. So oh, I think um, um, that's too drastic, far too drastic for my for my way of thinking anyway. So it's just golden. It's good to see you all are agreeing with me. Dan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Council Captain. Oh, I'd like to commend you, Brian, on um, on your passion um, for, for the, the district um, and, try, and trying this exercise, um, but I'm afraid. Um, I'll have to go against that. I, I think um, we were at we're at two point three one. Is it where we're at? I think that messaging of two point three one with the, the projects um, that have been voted on today, if you can um, communicate that message of going forward, and you're still going under our fours. Oh, I think the long term, um, that's probably the way forward. But I do commend you for, for, uh, for the zero, for showing us the zero. Um, but unfortunately, we don't know. This could last a few years. Um, these, these financial hardships. So you, you're going to get it eventually, anyway. And um, you start putting fives, five point fives, and sixes coming out in the future on, on some of our um, partner community will be quite horrendous in the years to come. So I'd rather stick with where we were at, two point two uh, one. Well, well done. I'm looking at more long faces than a horse stable. I'll do some horse trading with you. I think that we should go at a zero percent. I passionately think that it's going to put a burden on us when we go for the swimming pool and we go for the hub. But okay, if you don't want it, it's a perception thing. So someone's had a kick in the guts, so I'll put my hand out and lift them up. Maybe we'll just sort of stand back and let them get up on their own feet. From my calculations, it would cost somewhere over, let's throw $100,000 in there and it would put us at a one point something percent figure. It's a perception. And I openly acknowledge it, it's a perception. But it shows that we're compassionate as well and there's at least some movement to try and acknowledge where they are. If you don't want to go to zero, 100,000 this year will bring us under 2% and we can wipe that out pretty much as we walk out the door tonight. Councillor Finch followed by Graham. Thank you. Um, I really, really want to support our, our district nation through the whole thing, right round the district, not just one area of people working or not working. And I could stomach that a lot more. While I'd really love to do the 0%, I just do not see it as feasible, especially not if the next year we jump up to 7%, because I think it's going to take us a long time to recover from this. And I think if we go from 0% to 7%, that's also a perception where you're paying very little, nothing in rates, and then all of a sudden you get bang slammed with it. I'd rather see a gradual, gradual rise. And that, I think, will work out far better for the majority of people in the district. So I would fully support that one. Earlier, I would not. 
Sharon, could I just, just to help me here, could you please put up 1.9% what it would cost and how it affects next the next year? Because I'm picking that'll bring it in under 4%. Well, that's and also, right. Brian, if we could have just for what the monetary figure of 26 is, I can't see it from Oh, sorry, 2.6% was nothing. That's where we are. No, on a rates increment. 2.6%, the average, we've seen the list of these. Um, 60 bucks. Sorry. So if we went at, oh, sweet. 1.93% is 100 in, and next year we're at 358 so we've gone under the four. We haven't bounced out. We have got a second year one there. Um, that would make that's, it far better. That's the reality there. A hundred thousand. We can't, from a from a perception point of view, support our rate cards by a hundred thousand. We were at the Councillor Graham followed by Councillor Payne. Yeah, um, I know it's early, but I haven't heard of anybody that's their jobs. Um, I think we'd, we'd go at 2.31, and, and you talk about perception. <coughs> Let's put across that perception that, hey, that we're a go-ahead council, and, and we're... 2.63, is it not? Sorry? Isn't it 2.63? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. People see that we're a positive go-ahead council. Like, uh, how much did you say that that 2.31, that average increase at dollars... Oh, as I say, Bruce, this is purely perception. Yeah. This is purely just a handout and lifting people up. And and to say there's no unemployment on Saturday's paper, yeah. I was really surprised at how many were unemployed in the district, but there's an additional 74, it said. We're disputing that at the moment, but that's the official figure, 74 in the last six weeks. Maybe they're not too proud to work at freezing work, so they didn't pass the drug test. So. Yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of work. Bruce, they were at, these people were in a job, and now they're not. And well, Finnegan's this, not this. taking any further employment on, so it wouldn't be fair to, to put good people that have been dumped out of the job. At the freezing works? Uh, some of them will be at the freezing works, but there's 74 that's down there. Finnegan's not employed anymore. Right. Uh, it was see, surprising last week. Uh, Dave. Oh, that's okay. Got the unemployment. It's Yeah, I know people have lost their jobs. Council of Bain. Thank you, Richard. But you're dead right, it is perception. Um, and I think we've got a very good case for that. We started at 3.63 or 2 this morning, and we're now sitting at, what do you say, is it 2.31? We've already knocked a whole percent 1.3 off it. That, that's a good start, isn't it? We're continuing with all our projects. We're not, we're, not, we're not denying anybody anything. We're getting on with it. We are being progressive. Um, what else do we have written down here? Um, yeah, look, I can't support a zero rates increase at all at this stage, just based on what I've heard so far. So. Now I've moved back from all yeah. zero up and see the oh. and see the stable. I still, again, I can't see them. I mean, I'm not sure what it equates to a dollar term. Like I said, if it's fifty-two dollars, we're giving them a dollar a week. For goodness sakes, it equates to nothing in my mind. Cheap investment <laughs> for what? Oh, um, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, yeah. Councillor Foster, follow my um, I share your <laughs> your concerns, and uh, I I would um, support the one point nine percent. We need to be lending a helping hand to everyone in our district, and that's not you know that's business owners, farmers who are, who have or, or, or could be struggling in, in the future. There's um, our whole district needs us to uh, show some empathy at the moment. And if you're talking about $100,000, just to me, um, you know, it's, uh, and if we can keep that rate um, increase down in the few, in next year, I, I would totally support that. Councillor Herbert, followed by Payne. Thank you, and congratulations, Your Worship, yeah, your Worship on that. Uh, you know, we speak to her a moment ago, you just about had me, actually. <laughs> um, well, look, we've sat here today and we've decided on some big projects, and those projects come in the way the loan thing works next year. And if we go to zero, we're doubling the problem. If I don't put fertiliser on my farm this year, I'm going to put twice as much on next year. And if I don't put it on next year, I'm going to put four times as much. And the problem gets pushed in front of us, and we can sit here and create accounting all over all we like. And I'm not, look, I'm not hard and fast, but I, 
I think the zero thing has been sold to us. It's been in the media a lot lately, and I don't think we want to get carried away by it. We, do, we don't want to be led by what the council next door is doing. We're our own council. Let's do it. Suits us. Um, I'm happy at 1.9, and I'm happy at the 2.6. I don't like heading towards zero, because I think we're just pushing the problem out in front of us too much. And Steve made the comment before about the road smoothing, and all, the, all those options are in front of us. But the more we push it out, the less those options obviously get, the further out we go. Um, and sometimes I wonder if roading and smoothing shouldn't be used as those two words shouldn't be used in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> can I say, John, that I've already openly stated that I can feel the sway of things, so the zero percent, well, I still believe in it. Just so that we can look our red bars in the eye and say that we did have compassion. It's a $100,000 investment in our reputation as a council. Takes us down to 2.9, shows that we did try, shows that we've done every um, single thing, 1.9%. Shows that a hundred thousand dollars for our reputation. Tuck, Kim. Um, just sorry, Pete, just a point of clarification, just so you're aware of figures. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we did was, um, uh, because it's dealing with the roading smoothing, um, we dropped it down to um, the, uh, just under the 2%, 1.9. Um, then uh, we started at 3.58%, but it meant that we we're at 5.5% for year three. Um, and um, had no smoothing, so uh, we brought up year two to 3.9%, mm -hmm. so it's still under 4% cap, um, had a little bit of smoothing left, um, but it still will have 4.77% in year three. But the impact is simply that we're using, having to use all the smoothing to achieve that. So I know you worship, you're saying $100,000, it's my job to also say that the, pro, the um, package is not just $100,000, it's $100,000 plus Four hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars, leaving a net zero balance of road and smoothing available to us in the future. Mm. So, I just that's the package. Yeah, yeah, but the, the compassionate part is hundred thousand road smoothing to me. Is a <coughs> Council of Pain and then the Council of Yeah, yeah, thank you, Worship. Was just a follow on from Councillor uh, from Councillor Foster and yourself. Uh, like it, it's never a hundred thousand dollars because it's. It's not just the hundred thousand dollars we're putting in; it's the hundred thousand dollars we're missing out on as well. So it's effectively it's two hundred thousand dollars of income, isn't it? But it's got to be spent elsewhere. If I'm not correct, you're right. It's yeah. two hundred thousand. Well, it's one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but we can't, another hundred that we don't get as well to spend on that. And now it's still the same hundred. Can you can't times it like that. It's the same hundred. And whether it's, it's in our investment count or not, it's only gone once, doesn't that twice? Um, Ellie, I hope you don't get it. <laughs> I would support a 1.9% um, wage rate um, increase. I just think we need to be supporting our whole community. Um, and it's extremely early days as to how our community has been affected. So I would um, support a one point nine. In fact, is it too soon to move there? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, would have, we can't have said that half an hour ago. Would have taken it earlier. <laughs> so move. you're moving it, and I'll second it. Uh, one point nine. Uh, the the hundred thousand. So we're going to move in a second. Uh, we need to push it along somewhere. And my apologies because I am passionate about it. And, and I know we all are. Councillor Bowiller, is that a scratch of the head or is that a say? Oh, oh, sorry, Councillor Cowie did have a scratch. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, well, I've listened to scratch. Actually, my, my, I've got to suggest 1.8, well, that's a deal. Then we'll be so quickly cutting our rates and crashing hard. Yeah. So 1.9, you can live with. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's what I was advising. Councillor Bowiller, followed by Catholic. It's just a question, actually. So this will come off the UAGC. So, so it's basically distributed evenly across all the eight players. Oh, yes, we discussed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 It goes to the UAGC. Yeah. It comes out of the reserves, goes to the UAGC. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's, that, that's that was our question. question. Okay. No more hands put to the vote. We better have a show of hands while we're doing it. All those in favour, raise your hands and say aye. 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 Those against, do you want your vote recorded, Councillor Graham? Thank you for that, Tim. I appreciate that. Uh, we need to also go down to consider number six.
the only one that we have to do is this, Your Worship. So yeah, we also have to go down to the very number six. So you'll see it there, the possibility of setting up a working group for targeting. Yep. And it's open for discussion. Yeah, so sorry, just to explain that one, because I haven't done that one, Your Worship. The, so the point was that um, whereas the um, reduction in rates affects everybody, and it's not necessarily targeted to COVID-19 distress, the question was that there are many examples out there um, of um, options um, that uh, are more targeted to that. Uh, and the question would be whether or not you're going to put some money in to support targeted distress uh, as opposed to what you've just done. Um, so this is always an addition or alternative. So that's the point. And the other thing is the working group was still about um, making uh, quick decisions around um, changes to the rates based payment policy um, because I think that's essential and I understand listening to um, Mike Goldson has told me that the um, the uh, bill before Parliament's gone through its third reading so it's actually going to happen which will allow us to do a very shortened consultation process to amend our rates based payment policy to be able to provide um, options for ratepayers to postpone rates as a, as a consequence of COVID-19 distress. So at the moment they can't business can't, you know, there's only two options at the moment that they can use and none of them would apply um, necessarily. So that's, that's um, that just has a revenue effect timing and we're always able to get that back so it doesn't show up as a rates impact. Um, so that's okay, we can progress to that. But the other part of the, the, the other part is the dollar bill is to say to you, um, you know, uh, there's issues around, uh, you know, potentially we could reduce fees in some areas, we could, um, we could address the cribs or we could look at other bits and pieces that need to be looked at specifically on a case or group basis as to what's more important. But the point was, you've just approved across the board to every ratepayer a reduction using investment accounts. And we still haven't done anything specifically for COVID-19 rates distress. You know, the businesses that may really be struggling other than offering deferment and rates postponement options. So that's the question. Do you want to use investment funds of some form and you just cap it and say, yep, we'll put some money aside. Um, and if you are thinking about, you know, what are we actually doing, that would be more targeted and have more impact for the messaging, but it's not about messaging as we know, it's about doing something than anything else that we've potentially looked at already. But the question is, We've got rid investment, we said that, but are you wanting to put anything towards that? And I simply said that there's such a range of alternatives that could be done that the quickest way to provide COVID distress relief is to say, um, put out a limitation or a constraint, put a, an elected member group with the councillors, we could bring in others if we needed to, and allow them to get on and make calls around um, uh, distress relief. So that's all that was about, but it would need funding of some form, um, and um, that would be an interesting message you could send to the rest of the district. You can also do that. What's your thoughts, Tate? Meeting's open for discussion. Councillor Finch. Thank you. Um, I too think this is really, really important for targeting ones. My question was going to be where from. Steve, can you give us a rough idea of how many businesses that you think will actually be requiring help and that might give us a bit of a rough idea of how much funding we can actually put out there? I'm sure we should not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it's too which soon, is, but... Which is why I was suggesting just a cap of some yeah. that says go away and do the best you can yeah. for this amount. And if you go over, you don't go over it. Um, and that's what you work to, just, just like we're all sports or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. We've got an amount to work to and that's it. I know, it was too soon, but I just sort of ask if Councilor, people have been coming saying they were in dire stress already. Councillor Cattle would follow my ground. Yeah. Um, you know, just... I don't, yeah, I don't really... I mean, I'm in a situation where I've got um, rates coming out, no income coming through those buildings. Um, the reality is, uh, two days ago, you can go online and apply for a small business loan. If you've got under, if you've got under 50 employees, it's, uh, it's $1,800 an employee plus $10,000. It's interest free for a year. You've got five years to pay it off at 
It's cheap money. I'm going to. I'm, I'm applying for it. I'm waiting for a call back on it. Um, yeah, those, those things are. There's, a, there's been quite a bit in place. Um, just with the wage subsidy that went out. Um, just an example. I mean, Brian, you made the example the other night about someone that wasn't probably deserving it was taking it out. We'll end up in the same situation where people will construe these stories to um, to get their rates relief. Um, they'll take it. They'll take. They'll take a lot less scramble. Um, I think we've done a good enough. We've done pretty well at, at reducing the rates uh, increase down to one point nine five from projected three point six. I think we're at. I think we've done a pretty good job there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be in support of, uh, of that. Is that the tools? I think the time. You know, and what, what were we thinking of the time frame or this year? I presume Michelle would have really thought. No, I suppose that just, I mean, as I said, I'm just trying to explain that um, it was the only sort of limitation or constraint in place on it was probably a funding constraint. The idea is that you're going to have potentially lots of different options. But the point I was trying to make is if you didn't provide something, um, then you have no no options mm -hmm. when people come to you and, um, you know, have a particular good reason or whatever. You have no solution because the only solutions you have are postponement or deferrals or payment plans. So th that's all we were saying is I can't tell you what is coming so to if us. if it's there, you don't necessarily have to use it? No. Mm -hmm. Could I suggest, you know how we set a group, is it the executive as a mechanism? So that there's a few hard noses that can go no all the time. Mm -hmm. Councillor Cowell. Thank you. Um, and uh, well said, Dane. I appreciate your honesty. Um, look, the farm and me says all this has to be paid back from somewhere else. And, and, and for us to sit here speculating on an unknown amount for an unknown request is something I struggle to support with. I mean, I've had plenty of rough times in farming, and I never came to the council saying so thank you very much. Like, yeah. it's been over 10 days, and most of my lambs have died. It's just business to get on with it. And this, this to me, is, is, is really unknown territory, and this is. I love this. This is why I'm tiptoeing through this one. I'm the solid ground followed by Ludum. Yeah, I, I think this can sort of come back as, as um, a perception thing too, is um, that that um, if someone is struggling, it gives them a peace of mind that there is someone to come and have a yarn to, someone that might be able to help them or guide them. In. And it might not even be that we give them money or, or, or whatever. But Peace of mind is a, is a huge thing, you know. And there probably um, there wasn't a facility to help you out with your own. Did you inquire about a facility to help you get you out of that? I went to Lickland. All right. There was nothing. Council of Ludeman followed by Foster. Well, I'd ask, does this decision have to be made today? Because is it going to have a rating impact? Um, be, because there are unknowns at the moment and to be setting figures and actually I just almost think this is a decision that's almost too soon because we actually don't know. The wage subsidy has today been increased oh, yeah. and, and the... Um, oh, it's extended as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, not increased, right. sorry, extended, yeah. sorry. Um, and there is the business support that's out there. And it's just that it is an unknown. I mean, if it has, if it's a decision that has to be made today, I can accept that and we can work through it. But actually, can it be something that we even look at at our next council meeting when we perhaps have a better understanding of actually what's happening out there and what, who and how many are affected? So that's really a question. Yeah. So you, um, you, it has no rating impact, Your Worship, so that's one thing. Um, the only thing that... Um, uh, I would have thought perhaps we would want to be moving on, um, which again has no rating impact, would be um, that we could begin the policy process to get the rates postponement and that moving, because otherwise, um, you know, we've got to go through the consultation process and all that things, but if we wait, um, you know, we've still got no options for anybody around postponement. So, I mean, the you don't have to put a dollar amount um, in there, you could say, um, you know, which doesn't impact another discussion in the council meeting, but you could agree to um, 
uh, moving ahead with the um, you know the elected members and staff, which effect that we'll be getting on with um, the rates postponement proposal. That could give us that ability to do that. And that would come back with the proposal to come back to the council, which I think would give us a little bit more information on how we wanted it to work and why it couldn't happen. So I've got council first to follow by um, yeah, to, to me, we're talking about a sort of a very specific group of people, not, not so much perhaps your businesses, business owners that, as you say, can get loans. But it's the people that have lost businesses and they, you know, they are not able to get subsidies, like the people that have lost jobs. Um, and I just sort of wonder, uh, you know, I, I, perhaps we do just wait to the next council meeting, but for, for staff to be able to have that, um, to, be, uh, to give somebody some reassurance, um, uh, to me, uh, yeah, I just wonder whether waiting another six weeks for that, um, and whether there was, you know. A, a, a Your Worship, could I just give you one example, maybe? We can't change the liquor licensing um, fees because they're by law. So if we were to try to recognise there's no income for a, for a bar or hasn't been, for example, um, there's no ability to reduce that fee. Um, and, and I don't have any ability to say only pay 50% and fund it from somewhere else. So those are, those are, that's one fee example of, of that around what might be a logical request from somebody to make to you. Um, they might say, I want help on my rates, and that's a rates postponement or payment plan. But on the other hand, they might say, your fees, why am I paying your fees? For a license that I can't use, for example, but I have no authority to do anything. It'll be a lot of that. Could be. No, the pub's open. No, no, no. 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 Where were we? Were we uh, with the site council? Thank you, Worship. Look, I, I actually thought this was more important than the above, but obviously I'm not quite wrong. I don't, this is just giving the tools up to, to the council to actually get on with this and do this, and it's just an approval sort of a thing. And so I totally support it. Um, just the fact that it is targeted and it's getting to the people that will genuinely need it. I mean, I, I do hear what Councillor Katha would say is about people milking the system, and, and it does happen. It's something that we're obviously going to screen and monitor, and we'll deal with it. Councillor Hurst, once I'm not agree with the King of Yeah, look, I, well, we're, not, we're not saying here we're going to agree with these people. What we're doing is giving us and the staff the ability to set up a group that will deal with this problem. So well, I see this as front footing, but I suppose the only concern I would have is what kind of authority that, that group would have and how far it would go. And the dollar amount. Mm. I mean, are, are they going to have total discretion over... I suppose there's no, they must have, otherwise no point setting up the group. Yeah, or would it be a recommendation to come back to council and then be... I mean, I think the argument would be about making things happen. Um, and I mean, you, you, you can, because it's got no rating impact, you could say, try it with a small amount. Um, and they can come back to council if, uh, and if it's working well or not working well, and you can ask for more because it's all coming from you know, your investment related uh, reserves. So it's not a rating impact anyway. You could start small, see the gauge what sort of demand there is. And because you've got council meetings and other meetings that can increase those, um, you know, the, the money for that, you can you can cover yourselves as a consequence. But you would also then have, um, you know, as you can see, I'm a bit passionate about that aspect of it too. You would then have that ability to say the council is able to be flexible and to tailor distress-related options in a messaging sense. Give us what an amount's fair. Oh, uh, you wish up. I mean. Uh, a reasonable, I mean, a good start might be why wouldn't you just say 100,000 like the other one um, as a start point? And then you're equivalent to all ratepayers and to targeted rate, uh, distress um, businesses. You don't spend it, and the political oversight is going to be right there. So, yes. so we're going to sell that of $100,000. So you're in a grand and a hundred thousand dollars and you're second in it. So Councillor Ludeman, Councillor Payne. Any further discussion? Councillor Bowella? Yeah, I support this too. I think anybody who comes to us asking for for um, the help in this way is going to actually have to bear their soul pretty mm -hmm. you know, down to the bone pretty much. 
to be successful, they're going to have to be pretty honest about what their, um, their business and financial conditions are at the moment. Or just at the moment, hopefully we won't need it, because I'm just reading the headline, budget 2020, $50 billion rescue fund amongst the generation budget, and that includes, as mentioned, the um, extension of the wage I'd like to work with the most up to date information. So hopefully, hopefully, 50 billion. 50 billion. I mean, that's probably includes what's in the house. Now we have a joke. Hopefully, perhaps the assistance that the government is providing will mean our businesses won't. Or very few people actually need to approach us because uh, I think there's some detail that has to be worked through for us as well. Yeah. People do have to take advantage of what the government is offering wage yeah. subsidies, business loans, etc. etc. Yeah. As I said, this is our district, that's, that's where we've got our mandate, and we want it to be the strongest and most resilient in New Zealand. If we put the, it in there as another backstop and it's never used, well, it's really. Got a move in a cell, oh, Councillor Kelly. I just, I just. Oh, no. on, did you move? Because that was no, 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 I didn't. No, no I'm sorry, as you were. I knew that was really. No, it was, it was just a question um, regarding the same. Um, the working group of elected members. I heard someone mention before about the executive committee. Is that common sense everywhere? Is it? Do you need that many? I don't know. It's just. A, it's an easy, it was a sensible solution to make. We haven't been overly taxed. <laughs> oh, some of you guys probably still in uh, level three. Yeah, some of us been working. I don't know. Right, with that, we're going to move in a second there. Let's put it to the vote. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those against? Councillor Sutherland and Catherwood. Do you want your votes recorded? Um, no. Thank you for that. On to the last of the public. Agenda items. We've got the schedule of fees and charges. Greg, do you have anything new to instill to us? Poor Greg's been there all day, and now I'm just <laughs> round on all like, Are you there, Greg? Nothing. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. I'm, in, I'm here. Yep. No, through your worship. Nothing else to add to that. Thank you for that, Councillor Fudge. Please, on page 115, whoops, which I've just lost, it's got the microchipping fee. That is not correct. It went up last year, I think it might have been. So you haven't got the latest price of how much it costs to microchip a dog. Sorry, I'm just getting back to... It's $50. Um, if they do it with another procedure, it's $31, but it is no longer the $30 that you've got there. That's very old. We'll make that change. We'll make that change. Okay, so the change is done. Someone's recorded it, Council Graham. Yeah, just not so much on, on this, but um, microchipping the dogs, is that, is that a requirement in the district? No. <laughs> if you, re if you register a dog now, yes it is now, farm dogs, no, you do not have to register working dogs. Yes, all the rest of your dogs from now on from last year should be all my dogs. No, right, okay. um, where are we heading with this one? We've got three recommendations there, haven't we? Council by Wheeling. Just, um, just given that there's no increase in staff salaries um, for this year, um, just wonder, should we then keep some of the hourly processing rates same level, and that refers to sorry. Um, building consents. There was some of the some of the charges you made quite come that were increased. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Minimum change, it. one hour, 150. Yeah, there was, I think it was 146 last year for it. Page for that. Yeah. So any of those where there's been an increase just in the hourly um, processing rates. Just 
staff time. Uh, so you worship, I mean, as a consequence and principle, you'd be right. <laughs> so, make that adjustment. Uh, you would argue that, Your Worship, yes. So it's more money on the rates. Okay, with those amendments, we've got three recommendations just to push on through with. Someone prepared to move? Happy to move. Happy to move all three of them, Councillor Herbert, seconded by yep. Councillor Bunch. Any further discussion? Put to the vote, all those in favour? Those against? Now I've had a look at our public excluded, and to me it's pretty procedural. And unless anyone has questions that are of a confidential nature, I'd like to just push them through and not go into public excluded. Has anyone got any objection to that? Doing that now or it's after? Holy shit, it is the next one. <laughs> so that's the end of that one. Um, councillors, firstly, can I thank you for the deliberation and for the compassion shown? Staff to Steve for working through and working out all the different angles. Thank you very much for that. For the team that put together three and a half logs, or hold on, John Scott's bit, four and a half logs. All the paperwork that didn't come easily, I know, so please know that we appreciate the information that you've given us, and, and I'm really happy with the outcome. Thank you much again. If we have... Three so if we come, if we finish this meeting, we'll go back to the next one, but we'll have a couple, will we? Yeah. 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 Right, so we'll come back. Well Sorry, Brian, what time, what time are you coming back? We didn't quite catch that. Yep. 18 minutes. <laughs>